Yes. Hello, historians. I'm going to show you how to insert footnotes and, of course, how and what to reference. So let me share my screen. OK. This is not the official Chicago Manual of Style 17th edition. I'm using a modified 16th edition, but I'm going to show you the basics of how to cite what to cite. And this is not my writing. I cobbled together an essay from various um, papers that had been turned into me over the years. I just took the first paragraph of a few of them and the last paragraph from a different one. So, but I want to show you, this is an all right opening sentence. It's Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois, I got that wrong, were two of history's greatest and most renowned leaders. It's not very insightful, but it has the property of being nice and clear. It shows me what the student intends to prove with this. So your opening sentence should be what you want to prove. You can open with a really dramatic sentence, but this is a nice solid one. Okay, um, both sig um, leaders had strong views on the abolishment of segregation. Segregation affected African-Americans socially as well as economically. So the rule is if it, it's a fact or an opinion by a writer you're reading that you're using their facts, you should cite it, but only if it's not general knowledge. This, segregation affected African-Americans socially as well as economically. Your average third grader would know that without looking it up. You don't have to cite that. But this next sentence, Washington took more of a self-progress route and preached to ignore discrimination, but also worked to a worked on achieving higher education as well as gains of material prosperity. So this, if I was writing my paper, I'd look at my notes and know that this idea came from Booker T. Washington's Atlanta exposition speech. So this is something that your average third grader wouldn't know out of their head. So you need to give credit, like you're at the Oscar Awards. I'd like to thank all the people who helped me create this paper. So we are going to thank Booker T. Washington in the form of a footnote. So you go after the punctuation mark. Sometimes it's after commas, but very much more often you'll put the footnote after the period. So you go up here to references, assuming you're using Microsoft Word, which many schools provide for free if you don't know how to get it. Ask your teacher. That's me in the case that my class is watching this. So after the, punct after the punctuation mark, you click on insert footnote. This is, you give the author's surname, Washington, comma, Atlanta, exposition, speech, period. Then after you have this, you are going to make it into a reference at the end of the paper. So here we go. We're on the Library of Congress's website. This is really neat because Library of Congress has a sound recording of Booker T. Washington reading part of his speech. So we're going to keep that website. I like to type it here, but careful you don't push enter, otherwise it'll go away. Washington, comma, Booker T, period, 1895. See, that's different in the later editions. The old Chicago Manual style, it was the second thing. Atlanta. This is the title of their website.
last accessed and today's date, which is, I'm going to prove to you how far in the past this was, 2022. And you give the pub, so the publisher right now is Library of Congress that shared this with us. We're giving credit because we're using the Library of Congress's edition, which might look somewhat different than another version. Maybe they corrected a typo from the original um, transcript of it, or maybe the other um, people you're seeing their version of it, maybe they changed a phrase. So putting where you got it from, the exact publisher is critical here. And of course the website, if there was a website address, if you're using a book, you use the um, publisher information. In this case, it would be McGraw-Hill in this book and that it was published in Boston in 2019. But in this case, we're using a website. So we take that and we put it, hold on, go back up here, insert page break, and then our work cited. I don't use the word bibliography as much because um, well, you're not using the book, so bibliography is kind of the wrong word. Works cited it seems more, or references seem more in keeping here. This will get a hanging indent, but that's more nitpicky than I necessarily need you to be. As long as you have it left, mar left margin, we're okay. Don't center it, please. Paragraph. Come on, there we go special hanging. Okay. That's the way we do it in the world of academia. Okay. Okay, so let's see. See the little one? Okay. Washington thought Preached is never my students' words. That's what they got off the internet. Washington thought or worked for African-Americans to be more educated in farming, industry, and social aspects. Okay. Du Bois philosophy was a bit different than Washington's. Du Bois helped create the NAACP, which came after he formed the Talented Tenth. Du Bois is more into, okay. So we're going to say that this information came from the NAACP website. So what we would do is, remember this is me just showing you, not me writing a good essay. Okay, NAACP, um, dot org, um, where's about? A lot of my students use the NAACP website for this. So I should be able to find it. About. Here we go. Boys. Oh, wow. The Crisis, um, Du Bois' magazine, 110th anniversary issue. Okay, here we go. About W.E.B. Du Bois, leading intellectual. So, the NAACP created this website. The title of this is W E B Du Bois, and I'm not pronouncing it wrong. That is how he pronounced his name. When did they write this? They don't have an author here. They are their, the author of it. And I do not see a date on this. So, 
W.E.B. Du Bois, last accessed 10, um, October 6, 2022, period. X, and then we put it here. Oops, I didn't cite it yet. But we're going to put it in the references. See? Remember, it's going to come by, um, ah, I said don't justify it. OK. Alphabetically by author. In this case, author is NAACP. In this case, author is Washington. Put a period at the end of the references because that's what Chicago Manual Style likes. And where was this? After the period, references, insert footnote, N A A C P W E B two boys, period. Okay. You're just putting the author, title, author, title. You're not giving me the whole thing, the whole thing, the entire, um, birth certificate basically of what you're using is who wrote it, what's it called, what year was it created, and then where can a person find it. Got it? So what's really cool about this is if you drag and drop this, your um, References will reorder themselves if you're doing it in Word. But also, it's probably best for you to say, to conclude this saying, these men, their views profound. End it with your opinion instead of ending it on someone else's fact or opinion. End that paragraph with your opinion. So, okay, one more time. This is, this subject is described in Souls of Black Folk. It's a book title, so it actually should be italics and not in the quotation marks as well as a speech by Booker T. Washington, both of which had merits for their arguments. We're going to pretend that this student took ideas from both Souls of Black Folk and the Atlanta Exposition speech that we just mentioned. So at the end of the sentence, after the punctuation mark, insert footnote. I, I like a space between my, my citations. So this is... Du Bois, comma, remember italics for book title, quotation marks for website or poem title or article title, souls of black folk, nope, period. And then you make it an italics. You put a semicolon because you are starting a new reference. Washington, and we could just cut and paste our previous one, period. This shows that you're, you, to compose that sentence you used, you're using both Du Bois' work and Washington's work. And then we go down to the references. Over here, I have opened the Project Gutenberg Souls of Black Folk book by W.E.B. Du Bois. This is really cool. It starts every one of them, every chapter with a song with the, the chorus music. Is that the right word? I'm not a musical person. The actual publishing date of this book is 1903. So we need to make an edit here. So your reference will look like Du Bois, comma, W.E.B. period. 1903. 
souls. And italics sit up here. So, um, so this is Project Gutenberg. I'm going to fix that. Oh, here it is, the Project Gutenberg ebook. Copy, paste it here. Um, last updated August 11, 2021. You have that information, use that information. X. And Du Bois comes before N. So we post it there. Oops, we don't want it hyperlinked. We want to put a period there. See the format. Remember, book title is italics. OK. So we, for my small papers, I want to see at least one primary source. In this case, we have two primary sources. We have one secondary source. Because for my short papers, we need a total of three sources. This is three sources, right? And for my small papers, I need to see at least eight footnotes, about four per page. These small papers, I really want you to focus on getting about four citations per page. Oh, for these papers, remember, you don't have time to, what's the word? You only have 700 to 1,000 words. This does not re directly relate to the main idea of your paper. If you were discussing skin tone privilege, letting um, Booker T. Washington have preferential access to education, this is something that maybe you would want to put in. But if you're specifically talking about his views on education, then you're going to want to leave out extraneous details that are not directly related to the main idea of your paper. So stay focused, outline it first. And I'm going to give you one more piece of advice for this. When you're writing your paper, never, ever, ever just read the um, work and then type, type in the stuff. Do not look at your source while you're typing. That way leads to accidental plagiarism. Every time students are tired, the more tired or the more in the rush they are, the more they're accidentally going to, um, what's the word? Oops. They're going to accidentally copy it thinking that this list is the way it's supposed to sound. So, or like the way Du Bois preached, or in this case, in one of these papers, the student used, but shut out from the world in a vast veil. They just took this in, find V-E-I-L. Okay, I cut it out of this paper, but the student accidentally took this idea. What I need you to do is read the sentence, then it dawned upon me with certain suddenness that I was different from others. Like or mayhap in hard in life and longing, but shut out from their world by a vast veil. In your notebook, I'm going to show you my notebook for my research. You will write Souls of Black Folk, 1903, Du Bois. You'll write that and you'll write that at the top of your paper and the website, you can go back to it. You can cut and paste the website into something so you have it. And then you'll put that Du Bois felt very much like his classmates, but he felt that there was a separation between them. Or you could just write, 
Du Bois felt like his classmates, but separated. Just write a few words. And then when you're writing your paper, use your notes and then say, here, I'll show you exactly how I would do this. Looking at my notes, you would put in, let's see, make this bigger. We're going to say it here, it doesn't matter. Du Bois felt that he was similar to his schoolmates, but because of circum, felt separated from them. Like there was a vast, a vast veil. Okay, see, I did quote and quoting a couple of words, fine. Do not rely on a full sentence. Don't rely on having a full sentence or you don't even need that. You're you separated from them socially, period. And then references, insert footnote. This was Du Bois. Once again, souls, comma, period. And since we do, since it is a book and we know it's a book and we're taking a direct line, if we have a page number, which eh, in this case, we could say chapter one, if it's a book, you would put the page number, but this one, we only have the chapters. So we would say right here, comma, chapter one, actually it's chapter I. So any idea you're using from the people you're getting it from, you put a reference. Every idea, every fact you get from somewhere, where every idea you get from somewhere, unless it's something a little kid would know out of their heads, you cite it. So about four citations per page is a good healthy average. So remember, insert footnote, references, and you can always just drag and drop this stuff around if you need to reorder your paper, which for these short papers is not a big deal, but for the long ones, very big deal. Um, anything else I want to tell you? Use your own words, trust your voice, never, ever, ever quote these historians. If they have like the perfect phrase, like three words that you could never replicate, like vast veil, Okay, fine, use it, quote that. But don't rely on the historians or the historical figures to say the words for you. Don't use whole sentences of theirs unless you're analyzing their words. Specifically say it in your own words and trust your voice, but then cite where you got the idea. I hope this helps you. I'm gonna stop sharing now. Have a great one.